branding is the story and marketing is the actual action that you're going to take to put that in front of people, the the go to market. So you've got to get that out in front of the right audience. And that's I think that's something a lot of people don't spend enough time doing. If your message is really intended for everyone, it's too generic. You have to have an audience. You you can't be one size fits all. I'm, I'm good for everyone because then it's very bland. It's very vanilla. Instead, you have to accept that only part of the market is really going to want you, but they will really want you because you are the fit for me. And that's one of the reasons we've leaned into diverse and talented here at Mojo Up. That's that's who we are. And we know some people won't hire us because of that. And that's OK. This episode is brought to you by me. Yes, by me, Victoria Odekumaya. I'm a brand photographer and strategist based locally here in Indiana. And I love helping women, small business owners and professionals with side hustles build and elevate their brand. So if you're in the market and looking for someone that would thoroughly help you create a beautiful imagery for your brand and help you connect to your target audience, I'm your girl. So why choose me? Because I offer a beautiful, luxurious celebrity photo shoot experience for all of my clients. The celebrity experience includes professional hair and makeup, wardrobe styling, I serve wine and chocolate covered strawberries, and I'm playing your favorite music because it's important to me that you look and feel great to create the images that we know will truly connect with your audience. So what are you waiting for? If you're looking for photography to help you elevate your brand, call on your go because I got you. Hi, Aja. How are you doing today? I am doing well, Victoria. Doing oh. well. So how are you? You finally good to like be ha- to be able to have this conversation. I know we've been trying yes. for now to get this going, but I'm really excited because I know this is going to be a great conversation. Yes, absolutely. So for those people that don't know you, you are a growth officer with Mojo Up. Yes. Chief growth officer, by the way, I'm sorry about that. But I know, be you know, let's just peel off the layers, right? You know, before you even became that, and just tell us a little bit about you. Maybe let's start with what you do now, but then go back. Just okay. I guess we should start with that. Sure. So uh, chief growth officer here at Mojo Up, and I have been here since June. So it's been just a few months, and it's wonderful. So it's it's absolutely been a great experience, but it definitely was a big transition in the sense that I have been in a different uh, in a different background in terms of industry. So doing similar work in a way, but definitely uh, leadership development and strategy work related to talent. That's really where I was for quite some time and decided to make the leap to uh, growing a business that's in marketing. And here I am. That's great. So real quickly, let's touch on what is Mojo 2? What do we do? Mojo Up Marketing and Media. So essentially, we are the largest Black-owned marketing firm in the state of Indiana. And we are really focused on being the diverse and talented go-to marketing agency. And that is one of the things that we think really makes us unique. We are diverse and talented. So we want to make sure that uh, we provide really kind of paving the road for uh, Black excellence, that Diversity isn't something where it has to be an or, but and talented is is very important. That is amazing. And I know that this is going to be a really great conversation because everybody wants to know about marketing, how to market. And I know you're going to give us some tips. Yes, yeah, so because we talked a little bit before we jumped on, like there's no one size fits all for marketing. Before we get into that, I want to get to know you as the person. So tell us a okay. little bit about you and let's kind of get take us back from the very beginning. Oh, my goodness. How far back are you wanting to go? I'm not that young. So I don't know that we have that much time, Victoria. Um, so I would say so I'm originally from Indiana. I'm a I'm a Hoosier. I went to IU and have always been in some kind of business development client facing position. It's just what gives me energy and kind of waters my flower, so to speak. 
So uh, I do have two small kiddos, uh, six and eight. And um, that's really what keeps me busy when I'm not working. And my career is something that really does feed me. So it's it's not the kind of thing where uh, I, I joke about uh, wanting Friday to come, you know, happy Friday and, and all of that. But I do love what I do. And so it's it's part of what keeps me going and a, a good mom for that. That's amazing. I don't know that so many people can say that they enjoy marketing, but we'll get to that. In okay. any case, <laughs> um, so how did, you were obviously in a different um, industry before you, you know, became a good officer. Tell us about that. Like, what was your background in? Sure. So I was a consultant for just shy of 14 years with a great organization that's in uh, Carmel. And I was an outside consultant. I uh, worked solely on commission. It was an eat what you kill kind of environment. Um, but it was it was really great. I did a lot of uh, training. I would acquire a client. I would work with them in human capital analytics. So um, assessments, things like that, really determining job fit, creating strategic plans, building teams, coaching, those kinds of things. And that was something that I, I really enjoyed. After it, I kind of reached a point where I needed something new and it was time for a change. And so as I moved into uh, giving some thought to that, I transitioned out and took a position as chief growth officer with a talent strategy company. And so I was there for just under four years. And that was a great experience as well. It, it the, what, the catalyst for that was really thinking, I wanted to try something different. And if I don't do it now, having been there for almost 14 years, I'd I would be too frightened that that the idea of, of a change would would maybe become too much. So I took the leap and it was it was a great opportunity, it gave me a, a seat at the table. And that was something I wanted as well. That's amazing. So you said that you acquired in your previous role, you acquired the clients. What does that really mean? So you are you are really going out and and getting your own business. So it it, it is kind of functioning as a as an entrepreneur within under the umbrella of a of a business. So you're not it's not account management where you're just keeping the existing clients happy. So you really do have to go out and build your own book of of business. Okay. So the reason why I ask that is because I don't know if you've caught on to this but marketing and sales has been in your DNA from the very beginning. It's not so this is good. So like now, you know, moving into your new role, you know, in this marketing and media company, it's, I feel like it's just coming home, right? Like, because you're taking all of that experience and you're using it to grow this amazing, incredible company and giving opportunity to people of diverse, you know, races and things like that. That's great. Okay. So tell us about, I know you're new to Mojo Up. And so tell us a little bit about Mojo Up, how you guys work, what you guys do, things like that. Sure. So, so. When it comes to to Mojo Up, we are really, as I mentioned, that full service agency. But we really consider ourselves especially strong in brand and creative. So we do a lot of strategy work when it really comes to messaging, to creating what we call brand clarity. Right when it, it's what is it that you do? How how well can you articulate that? What is the value that you bring? The problem that you solve. Um, to be able to to really articulate that is something that's extremely important. And, and for us, virtually every client we work with has the same problem. Yeah. They're great at what they do, but not enough people know how great they are at yes. what they do. We that's, solve that problem for them. That's amazing. So I hear this a lot. What is branding? Because some people think branding is your logo, the colors, but it's so much more than that. And I know you know that. So Help us at the best way you can. What really is branded? Well, and it's really fair that people don't because I can't really say I knew that before myself either. What was a brand? And the brand is not the logo. You only know the logo because of the story behind the logo and the brand that has been has been built. Uh, we wear a, a lot of um, Nike uh, jump man clothes here, the t-shirt. This is part of how we dress uh, on a daily basis at, at Mojo Up. And again, that's that's kind of part of our, our brand. But it's really thinking in terms of how you show up. Who, who are you? What is the story uh, behind that logo? Uh, Starbucks is the, the same way where before Starbucks, you could get coffee for a dollar and you had it black or with cream and sugar. And Starbucks changed the game. 
and right. made it so that it was something that you you would have uh, any possible way you wanted. And we'll do it for you. We'll put your name on it. And we're going to charge you seven bucks for it. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and I feel like knowing your brand, owning your brand, and also, you know, helping people at like what, what makes you different can help you at, uh, charge the big money too, right? So it definitely beyond the logo, beyond the colors and things like that. It's just be helping people understand what's the difference. What makes you different? Why should I to you? It was, a, you know, your competitor. So this is really exciting conversation. And and one of the questions that I have for you, because I've gotten a lot of these questions too, is like, what's the difference between marketing and branding? The difference between what? I'm sorry? Marketing and branding. Oh, I, branding is the story and marketing is the actual action that you're going to take to put that in front of people, the the go to market. So you've got to get that out in front of the right audience. And that's I think that's something a lot of people don't spend enough time doing. If your message is really intended for everyone, it's too generic. You have to have an audience. You You can't be one size fits all. I'm, I'm good for everyone because then it's very bland. It's very vanilla. Instead, you have to accept that only part of the market is really going to want you, but they will really want you because you are the fit for me. And that's one of the reasons we've leaned into diverse and talented here at Mojo Up. That's that's who we are. And we know some people won't hire us because of that. And that's okay. But there's right. others that will seek us out specifically for that. And that's fine too. So accept kind of what is different about you and lean into it. Love that. Lean into what's different about you because we don't have to be like everybody else. Like we need to stand out, be different and show it. Like, so one of the ways that I lean into what's different about me, I remember when I was thinking about the name of my company and a friend of mine was telling me how my last name is difficult to pronounce. And I was like, yeah, maybe, you know, like I was a little worried about that. And, but fast forward, now I'm like, I, I'm happy to tell people that my last name is Odekomaya. It's difficult to pronounce, but then I also remind them like, yeah, I'm Victoria Odekomaya with the, the photographer with a hard name to pronounce because then they're going to try to memorize it and then go search me out on social media or wherever they might be. So, you know, and even my accent too, I sometimes learn into read because I know that's one of the things that makes me different. So I love that, like just leaning into what makes you different. Because that's also why, how we can command the higher prices. All right. So I have this theory and I just wanted to hear what you think about it. Like marketing is not necessarily branding, but but every aspect of no, branding is not marketing, but every aspect of marketing is branding. So like every activity that you do to market yourself is an element of branding. And I also even think that your customer service, like how you make people feel like, your processes, your system is also a way of branding yourself. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything is part of your your brand and thinking about the personal brand and your organization's brand. And if you're a, a solopreneur, the two are almost the exact same. And if you have an, a, a business where you're bringing people on, you want someone whose authentic personal brand matches that of the business. And and now brand also includes your your values. It includes uh, your your social stance on things, which was not the case maybe 10 years ago, 15, but it, it certainly is now. Wow. Okay. So I know one of the things that you guys do is brand clarity. So what does that what does that mean? What does that what's that process like? So it's it's really boiling it down where if you think about a game of telephone right? All the way from this person to this person. Is the message and the brand, uh, the the tagline, how you describe yourselves, what you say. So so I already did that here with you where I said the number one problem that we solve. And I explained that. Yes. That is the same in every conversation. It may differ a, a, ever so slightly, uh, but that is intentional so that people do know the problem that we solve if not enough people know how good you are at what you do. So that's something that a, that really a business needs to be able to do or a person to say, here's why you should choose me. If you have this problem, I solve that for you. And getting that kind of clarity so that you can articulate that or someone else can articulate it for you <laughs> succinctly Ooh, and clearly. I, I love that because 
I think part of the reasons why we don't sell is because we cannot articulate what we're selling. And see this a lot with coaches, right? I'm a business coach. I'm a, you know, life coach, but what do you do? How, you know what I mean? It's, why do I need one? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Why do I need one? Oh my goodness, this is good. And I think that, that also feeds into, let's talk a little bit about social media, right? Because I know this, you know, this whole branding thing is big on social media and how we show up, how we articulate what we do and things like that. What are some of the things like a small business when I know there's a lot of them listening here, um, especially people that, you know, that are side hustlers too, right? What are some of the things that they can be doing to help them clarify their messaging so that they can stand out on social media? It's a really crowded space, you know? Right, right. So a couple of things. Number one, start with your, what we here at Mojo Web call your avatar. Figure out who it is that your audience is, right? Because uh, if you're talking... It, to if I'm if I'm looking for Victoria, I probably would be more so on LinkedIn than if my if if my target audience is is maybe um, a 19 year old who I'm trying to sell uh, beauty products to, right? right? So so thinking about you know that then I'm thinking TikTok. So so thinking about your audience and where you can find them. That's that's key. And then I would also say if you're not doing video, you're not marketing. I, I have put things out for, for a very long time in terms of, of articles and information and posts, but it didn't get the same level of uh, interaction that the videos I've started doing since I joined the team here at Mojo Up. And it's intimidating. So I, I mean, I know why people didn't, right? Um, and it's still sometimes I, I cringe when I see how it starts out or like before the, the video began. <laughs> You kind of got to let that go. And if you can get past that and think, I, I have a bigger objective here and just lean in. Uh, and, and it's no different for anyone else. Yeah. So video is something I would say people should use and try to um, leverage micro content. So don't don't give people um, something really lengthy in order to get to know you. Right. That's really good. Because who has time these days to watch you know, unless they love you, they like you, they consumed a lot of those micro content, then they would sit through the long, you know. Right. Yeah. Then I'm going to then I'm going to watch Victoria's podcast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> watch my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I love that because I think that we forget that there's a there's a process to this. Right. And I know we talked about this a little bit before we got started, like marketing or branding is not just one magic thing that you got to do. You know, like this, uh, it's a series of things in my opinion, that you do strategically, right? It's not exactly. throwing things, you know, hoping that this works. Somebody told me that I need to get on social media and now I'm getting on social media. Well, what are you posting on social media? Why are you posting on social media? What's your goal for posting on social media, right? These are things you have to walk through and understand and then, you know, figure out what the messaging is so that you can kind of post on social media. Wow, that's great. Exactly. It's it's You have to have an end in mind. Yes. And then a plan a roadmap for, for getting there. That's what we call a blueprint. Yeah, yes. And so tell us about the blueprint. I know that on your, on your website, you help with brand audits. And that's something that most people don't take advantage of, you know, like, yeah. what is real, what's that? For those that don't understand what brand audits is, what is it? It's taking a look at all of the places that you show up if I am to Google you or your business. And how, how then do you show up uh, digitally to someone? If they're really looking looking into you, so what is your footprint on your website on LinkedIn? Do you not have anything there? Um, what do I see on Instagram? What do I see on TikTok? All of those things um, that gives us a, a look. There's certain things that that we would want to see in order to reach that what we call that awareness stage, so that I can, if someone says, you know what, you should absolutely talk to Victoria. Really, I'm googling. And then I'm looking and then I'm, okay, I'm going through, I'm going through. So you've got that that uh, awareness stage, then there's consideration. And that's how I interact with people online is to find out, is this someone I should call? Should I schedule that meeting? Do I need this service? How do they work with others, et cetera, but way before people get to decision. And so that's a necessity to have something for people to consume and be able to decide to take that next step. Yeah, and you're right, because it's like, and most people don't think about that, right? We're just posting and posting and not thinking about the sum total right. of what 
the other person. And I do the same thing too. Before I buy anything, I'm searching, you know, like that actually even last night, you know, there's something I'm considering buying and I was looking into this person and how they're showing up on their websites, like the how everything is put together, you know, social media and exactly. things like that. It just sounds very intentional, right? And sometimes, you know, we just do it because someone told us to do it. And I think that's my biggest sticking point. Like, I'm so frustrated when people say, yeah, somebody told me to do this and I'm doing it. But why? Like, do you have a plan? <laughs> Very few. That's, that's usually just because I didn't know what else to do. So yeah. it was it was easier. Right. Also, when someone asks, I don't know if you get this question a lot, like, what should I post? Or how many times should I post? Mm. And again, that all goes back to thinking about that that blueprint that you you create up front. So you clarify your brand, who your messaging goes to, and then you start to think about what am I trying to accomplish? And there's different things. You may be promoting the gala, right? That I know I can't wait until we we get that rescheduled. I, I definitely want to be there. It, so there may be a, a campaign to promote an event. And so you want to make sure that you get the right people in the room. Or you may be launching a, a new product or service. And so the way that you would want to put that out there on social media would be very different versus maybe a rebrand. And I'm refreshing that. And we've got a new logo, new colors. That's not necessarily something that you would have to let people know this is coming, this is coming in the same type of way on social media. That's great. Okay, so this is helping me think about a question, maybe not, maybe more so for me here. So are there stages of brand awareness or is it all the same? Tell us a little bit about that. Stages of brand awareness. Absolutely. Well, you, you go through, as I mentioned, kind of that awareness into consideration and then into decision. So there may be a completely new brand or product on the market, or you're simply just new to me, which is basically the, the same thing until I get a look at, oh, she has experience. I can see what she's done in the past. That's the reason that your online presence and that brand assessment, is, as you mentioned, can be important to understand what am I putting out there? If someone recommends me, which is really not enough anymore, now that we do all have this large online footprint, this access to information from everywhere, I can order something from, from Amazon. Why should I order local? Why should I work with you? And you have to give me that personal feel, even though we've never actually spoken yet. Wow. Okay. And so what are some things that someone can do to start creating that awareness online? I know we talked about social media, but in my mind, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, beyond the micro content, beyond the um, showing up on social media, maybe even testimonies, video testimonials could work. You know? but what are some of the things that you, you can recommend to someone that is like, okay, how do I start, you know, creating all this brand awareness so that when people looking, are looking for me, they can be finding the right yeah. thing for me. Well, part of marketing is also talking to people. Mm. I know even at being at a firm, et cetera, but that is, that is really how I grow my business is through relationships, conversation. Then people want to check and take a look after, right? Um, and that's, that's one of the ways that, that I would recommend that if you're not getting out and, and simply talking with people about what you do, that's I would recommend as number one. But in addition to that, I think creating that awareness also comes with personalizing it a little bit. Giving people, if you're going to put something out, even on your website, the about, the story of how you got to where you are, why you chose this route for business, what makes you different about what you do. All of those things are, are things that I think people want to know and will remember. So that's, I think, more of a place to start when it comes to the content that you're putting out on social media. So otherwise, you, you, you're you in all of the noise. Mm. Okay. So I'm a small business owner. I want to do all these things that you're talking about. Oh, I'm already doing some of this. I just had this question literally last week about producing videos. And, yes. you know, there's a school of thought that just show up the way you are, like use your cell phone, don't worry about anything, just show up. And there's some people that want to, you know, do the production, right? They want to do the, you know, make it all fancy and things like that. What do you, how do you have to say about that? Budget. Mm. If you have, if the, if you have the budget for something better, absolutely do it. I, I think that's just like anything else with the, you know, the 
the car that I I drove with no radio in it when I was 16, right? <laughs> I've upgraded, but well, that, you know, that was incremental. There were, it was a process. And so I think to, to have expectations that you're going to have this beautiful, uh, you know, um, professional production with, with lights and cameras, if you don't have the budget, it's, it's unrealistic right. and it's, it's unfair to hold yourself to that expectation. Right. However, though, if you're trying to build a luxurious brand, how do you, I guess I'm thinking about, you know, sorry. So I just learned about something. So I was listening to this podcast and she was talking about how you have to be showing up as who you want to be. Right. So like that future self, which I, you know, I subscribe to. And then mm-hmm. I'm thinking, well, I want to show up as this this person, right? This, you know, luxurious, you know, my brand is a luxurious brand, so I put a little yes. bit of effort into that. But yes. like thinking about someone that's just starting out, and I guess I understand the budget it makes sense too, but I think, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I guess I'm just thinking true, like how you make a balance between, you know, putting something of quality out there, also, you know, going back to up, if you will, you know, and that's then I think it's also it's prioritization the same way we do in, in our life anywhere else. Right. So um, as, as I'm thinking, if I have a, a very important meeting or event, I'm going to put some more thought into how I show up for that. Right. And I, I think you do need to think about your again, thinking about that audience, thinking about who am I who am I talking to? Because if you have a luxurious brand and you don't show up in a way that looks polished and professional, not happening. Right. And, but at the same time, there's also other brand that's where it's not part of the brand to be luxurious. And instead you want to seem um, more relatable, more affordable. Right. And so that's where you have to think about the plan and, and all of those things um, up front. Right. That's- have a plan. Yes. Have a-, have a strategy. Have a strategy. I love that. I feel like that's the... But the one thing I tell people, you have to have a plan, have a strategy before you even dive in. And you can tweak it along the way, but at least know where you're getting to, where you're trying to get to, you know. All right. So I know you get to do a lot of things. Um, how can people work with you? Ah, um, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm, not, I'm not hard to find. Uh, I'm very easy to reach on LinkedIn as well. And people also can can reach us and schedule a meeting via our website, mojoup.com. But I, I think working with us and and when we are a fit for someone or an organization is when they really do realize, I need a plan. I, I've got, uh, I was speaking with a, a not-for-profit yesterday who has um, some marketing dollars that they, they really haven't had before via a grant. And they are trying to make sure that people know about a specific program that they offer that they, they, they have for a while but people know them as this when they offer all of this. And so we're really trying to put some effort and thought into creating a strategy to spend those dollars wisely with that goal in mind of reaching uh, more people that they would be able to to help directly with their services, people who would then maybe recommend their services and say, you know, sis, you, 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 this is for you. You really need to see this as well as people who can make professional recommendations and donations to them and volunteer. So really thinking, okay, if these are all of the avatars we're trying to reach and we want them each to take a different action, what do we need to do and how do we go about that in a way that is cohesive and strategic over the next 24 months? And so that's the kind of thing that I would recommend that people, if you need something like that, Mojo Up is is definitely the agency for you. Right. That's great because sometimes, you know, you, we don't have a, a, a limited budget, right? So you have to prioritize, but you also have to think about how you are, you know, messaging, like what's your timeline to, again, I, or coming back to your goal. And it sounds like, and I know you do some videos as well. You do. So can, just a little bit about some of the other services that you can. Absolutely. So sometimes um, individual services are what we will do for a, a client. Maybe their brand is where it needs to be, but they're looking for a spotlight video. We've got a, a new CEO, the last one retired, and we'd really like to give you an opportunity to get to know this person. 
And so we will produce a, a video for them. You get to see what they look like uh, in their new role, what their goals and plans are for moving the organization forward. And also a little bit of a behind the scenes. Here's here's my, you know, my three kids, my my beautiful spouse and my my dog, you know, Larry. So we, we get we get to see a, a little look into to who someone is. And that's become a lot more important. I think, again, kind of seeing the as we talk a little bit about, you know, work life balance and all of those things. People also want to know, who are you? Right. Right. That's great. And so um, all the information, obviously, we're going to put all of that on the in the link below, Mojo. That's pretty easy to remember. But I'm going to make sure that it's all in the... You I know. appreciate that. No, no problem. Um, anything else you'd like to add? I think the other thing I, I will add is, is keep an eye open. We are going to be putting on a one-day boot camp. So a... a uh, brand blueprint boot camp for those kind of solopreneurs who want to get their their brand clear and and the messaging. What's the problem I solve? What is unique about my organization? How do I then kind of create a plan for my next twelve months of social media? But I'm just one person. I don't have that kind of budget. So rather than spending the time one on one, we bring everybody into a room and walk them through that process so that it's more. Uh, affordable for the solopreneur who still needs it just as much. That's great, especially at this time of the year. My understanding is that usually those big corporations, they're done with their their plan and marketing activities by this time of the year. So that way they can, you know, start selling. But typical small business owners, we're thinking January 1st is where you need to be ready. Like you have to be ready way before. So this is perfect timing. If this is something that you really need, which I think a lot of us need, please get in touch with Mojo Up. Get a, like we can just get on your website, right, to find out information about this. I think yes, that will be that will be coming soon here in the next uh, probably in the next week or so. We'll have that date finalized for fourth quarter. So those who and we're probably going to have two days because we know I know what it's like when you're thinking, oh, that's the day I've got my kids field trip, you know, so we'll probably have a couple of options. So people can hopefully attend if that's something they'd like to do. Right. And so is this going to be virtual and in person or do you have an idea of what that's going to look like yet? Typically, we do these in person because there's a, a need for for that interaction and also the ability to kind of interact with with other people in the cohort. What what are Oh, that's a good idea. So so that's that's always a little cross pollination in there is helpful, too. That's great. That's great. So, yes. If you're in the Indiana area or surrounding area, or if you can fly down, please make it a point to put this on your calendar. Check out Mojo Up. I think this is going to be really valuable because as small business owners, we really need to have a strategy. Gone are the days of just, you know, doing something that hopes it works, right? And then that like feeling depressed or, you know, dejected that it's not working. I don't get clients. Those are, those, God, those, God are those days, you know. Right. We have the resources now. We have the opportunity to be able to learn more and have a strategy, a plan so that we can go in knowing exactly what we want to be doing, what we should be doing and how we should be showing up for our potential clients. Absolutely. We're working on our own plan for 2024 right now as well. So I, I it, it's true. We we don't preach it and not practice it. So get ready for for next year. And if we can help you, we'd love to. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity to join you. No, thank you so much for coming on. I, it's just a, a pleasure talking to you today. Can't wait to see you in person again. So so we'll be, uh, don't forget about me for the gala. Yes, absolutely. I would. But um, thank you so much for joining us again. You know, make sure you join in. Um, check out the website Mojo Up to get more details about how to be a part of this boot camp. Um, I think it's really gonna help you out. And for until next time, make sure you own your brand. <laughs>